Hello, and welcome to the Sisters, Sisters in Medicine. My name is Ashley. I'm Andrea. I'm Anne Marie. I'm Amanda. And we're here to talk about UTIs, UTIs or urinary tract infections. Mm. On today's episode, we'll be discussing the symptoms, causes, treatment, and prevention for how you can not get that type of infection. Now, at the end of the day, it is something that's very common and happens all the time. That's why we're here, these sisters in medicine, for you to make sure you're informed on everything you need to know about UTIs. So we're gonna start with some symptoms. Amanda over here is gonna take over and let us know what some symptoms are. Thank you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. So polite. All right. So, some symptoms of UTIs are burning upon urination, frequent urination, nocturia, which is waking up multiple times in the night to have to pee, hematuria, which is when you see blood in your pee, and in the elderly, it's most commonly seen there, altered mental state. Question, nocturia, hematuria. Something sounds pretty So like nocturnal, nocturia, night, waking up in the night. I see, mm -hmm. I see. Yes. Hematuria, hemo, heme, heme is blood. blood. Oh, and then okay. you have that common urea, which mm -hmm. has to do with urination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can figure out words right. a lot like right. that. That's how you, you pass your exams. <laughs> <laughs> right? Context you, you don't clues. know anything, you're just like, mm -hmm. right. All right. Now with those symptoms, are they, um, do you think something that happens all the time? Um, I would say I would, not all of them. From personal experience, yeah. all the symptoms she described are what I experienced okay, when okay, I had one. Okay. It's really I think uncomfortable. Definitely with the altered mental state, you never experienced. No, that, like so. but like you said, that's a common presentation yeah. in the elderly, like a clinical oh, presentation. Right. That's, in the a elderly. Yeah. that's a good point. That's a good point. Because I wasn't an active player. Yeah. 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 I was like, this hurts. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, a major cause actually is holding your feet. Do not hold your so, feet. Don't like sometimes you're like, let me just hold it. I'll go right. We all are at some point. I work in the farm. You just don't want to get up. Hours a day. Sometimes it's not even you you wanting to hold your pee. You're at work, you can't. Right. But if you can, you need to go to the bathroom. Exactly. Another big cause I see in a lot of my girlfriends I've talked to, um, they're not peeing after sex. And I don't know why people are doing this, like, but you definitely want to pee after sex right. because holding your bladder and keeping that um, that urine in your bladder after sex and after you know sexual intercourse. You're introducing a foreign substance into your body, right. and bacteria will climb up your short urethra that we women have. We yeah. were just created with a short urethra <laughs> and stick to our bladder. So you really want to pee after sex. Some other common causes would be pregnancy. Um, a lot of pregnant women will have um, frequent UTIs, mm -hmm. poor personal hygiene. A big one actually is um, heavy antibiotic use. Maybe you have some type of infection that requires you to be on antibiotics for like seven days, 14 days, 21 days, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But um, antibiotics can all can actually kill the good bacteria down in your, right. your genitalia, flush all that out, and you're just left with, you know, they're also killing bad bacteria, of course, right. but you're left with either little to no bacteria, and then that um, allows like bad bacteria to get ground. introduced, yeah, yeah. and all your good flora were killed, and then that can cause UTI. Um, actually, the most common organism as the cause for UTI is E. coli. So I thought that was pretty interesting when I read that. Because yeah. you hear about E. coli and meat, you know, you don't think yeah, it's also right. causing UTI. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's actually the most common Everything organism. Everything is connected. Mm -hmm. So those are some causes for you. Andrea, do you want to hit us with some treatment? treatment for options. sure, I will touch on the clinical treatment of urinary tract infection. Yeah, Dr. Dre. Go for Let it. Know. So after you have been diagnosed by a provider, um, which would usually entail getting a clean catch of a urine sample, sample, so you would have to get them a urine sample ultimately, um, and they have sent it off and they have got back the culture, which is the results as to what bacteria is infecting that urine, your doctor will give you an antibiotic more than likely. A lot of times uh, doctors will give patients antibiotics even before the culture comes back. This is called empiric treatment, so it's broadly treating you with an antibiotic just in case because it could do more harm, leaving you those couple of days without it waiting for the culture to come back. Um, so some common antibiotics to throw out there, uh, nitrofurantoin to one macro bit, that's often used. Then we also have sulfamethoxazole uh, slash trimethoprim, brand name is Batrim, that's also used. Um, and then we also have levofloxacin and levoquin, which is another common antibiotic use. There are side effects with taking some of the medications, like nitrofurantoin can cause urine discoloration, yes, Batrim can cause GI upset, yeah, yep. levoquin, tendon rupture, and a whole wound oh, yeah, thing. Yeah. We don't really want to get into it. I'm yeah. so seeing a trend. You have to be <laughs> careful. <laughs> <laughs> so exactly. So the point of the matter is, is that you don't necessarily want to have to get treated with an antibiotic yeah. if you don't have right. to. Yeah. 
Um, and so that's what we'll go more into prevention, which is why that's important. Exactly. Um, but then just to touch base so that people understand when you're going into these pharmacies, if you do have a UTI or you think you have a UTI and you're thinking maybe I can treat it myself. The truth is, UTIs can go away without medication. That is true. Good to know. But I wouldn't take the chance. Um, I think it's very important to make sure that if you do think you have a UTI, you do get tested to make sure that you do or you don't so that you can be started on antibiotics sooner than later. Right. Um, but if you're looking for an over-the-counter remedy, something to help, Azo is a common product that can be used. Azole is just used to treat the frequency, the burning, um, you know, just the symptoms of the urinary tract infection. So you're not supposed to use it more than two days because it can mask the symptoms. And at that point, if you're really still suffering from symptoms, you should definitely be seeing your uh, your doctor to get treatment for it. Um, and then the disclaimer is that Azo and any other cranberry extracts or cranberry juice that a lot of people run to, mm -hmm. right? I they do not treat urinary tract infections. Okay, right. so that's a myth. It's a myth. Yep. It can only be Big used myth. to help prevent. Okay. And Ashley will go more into prevention. That's like exactly. yeah. Okay, okay, well, thanks, guys. You're welcome. Right. Um, so, ways to prevent UTIs. I know, um, I actually had a friend once. Um, she actually only drank coffee, okay? She literally drank coffee for a whole month. I don't even think she drank water. The number one way to prevent a urinary tract infection is to stay hydrated. I don't mean hydrated with sodas, juices, and coffee. I mean water. You need to at least be intaking at least a gallon of water a day. Everybody should be drinking at least a gallon a day. Now, if you drink a gallon a day, I guarantee... If you can't get a gallon, it's right. ten glasses. But that's why you go, you raise it high so you can get like something Yeah, fall somewhere in between. I mean, I drink a gallon a day, but hey, we'll talk about that later. But... Stay hydrated. So that's the number one way to prevent a UTI. Um, going down the list though, I know um, my sister here, Marie, she mentioned if you are sexually active, you want to make sure you pee immediately, female or male. I mean, obviously we're primarily speaking to the women here. If you've been having sex, it's in your best interest to make sure you void all that pee completely out when you're done. That's another way of preventing um, any type of UTIs. Um, another way uh, to prevent is if you use tampons. Sometimes pads is a better option, and you want to prevent yourself from putting any type of perfumes or fragrances in your private areas. You know, just rinsing with water and just using things that have no, not too I'm much scented. of a smell. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to use anything with a scent. Right, yeah. you know, because you don't want to irritate um, your private areas. Mm -hmm. Because for women, your vagina actually just cleans itself. Yeah. Right. So that's that's ways to prevent. Um, but a fun fact about UTIs is that it is the second most common bacterial infection in the United States. So as I mentioned before, yeah, as I mentioned before, it's something that happens all the time. It's completely normal. And it's something that we wanted to bring to the forefront to let people know that it's happening. Here's ways that you can prevent it. Here's ways that it can be treated. And here's how it happens, you know? Because 15 million cases um, occur in the USA alone per year. So that's something that we know is ongoing. It's, it's happening all the time. And 50% of women in your lifetime will get a UTI. That's one in two women. That's one in two women. Guaranteed you know. You know, so this episode was kind of just dedicated to making sure that females, males alike, everyone's informed on what's going on. And we can touch base on a topic that really affects you. A large yes. population. Right. Yeah. You know? And yes. just to go around one last time, anyone have any other key like facts? I have a question. Exactly. I have a question. I wanted to know if UTIs affect women and men the same. That's a really good question, Amanda. Who wants to take it? Dr. Dre? Okay, I'll take it. So, UTIs do not affect women and men the same. As in, they are treated differently because for men, they have to be given an antibiotic that can be guaranteed to get into, to penetrate into the prostate. Okay. Yeah. So it has to be nitrofurantoin, that is the drug of choice. Um, so for men and women? For men. For men. Oh, okay. If you're treating men with a UTI, they have to usually take nitrofurantoin because that crosses through that barrier to get into the prostate. For women, there are other options for us to take. And usually if a man gets a UTI, one, it's first considered to be a complicated UTI because of their sexual organ. Oh. And two, it's also considered to be a sexually transmitted infection. Oh. So we will get more into that um, in our other segment, STIs, right, STIs right. Okay. that gets all juicy. Um, uh -huh. But definitely, definitely good question. Definitely and just good. to touch Thank base you. on, you know, a little <laughs> bit of the prevention and just kind of bring it all, wrap it all up together. 
Um, number one, azo. I discussed that earlier. It can cause urine discoloration. So if you are someone who was thinking about trying that option over the counter, be Don't aware be that your urine It'll can turn reddish orange. Appear yeah. reddish orange. Okay. And number two, a prevention technique that you can do is in redescribe. You know, antibiotics get rid of all the good bacteria. But what about probiotics? Right. Probiotics are often used probiotics. over the counter, like yogurt. Yeah. It that's a probiotic. Yes, yep. exactly. So you could take yogurt, you know, regularly. You like eating yogurt, yeah. Go for I mean. it. Okay. Or yeah, you can take a probiotic while you're taking your mm -hmm. antibiotic oh, yeah, to well, make sure that you're yeah. supplementing with all oh, the good the gut bacteria that you're, that you're getting rid of. Yeah, quick question. Go so for it. Cut you off. Yep. But probiotics versus antibiotics. So antibiotics. Antibiotics are going to kill arm question. everything. Just kidding. Antibiotics often are either going to kill or stop the growth of bacteria. Mm -hmm. What that means is they don't have a specific marker like you're the E. coli, I'm going to eat you up. No. They literally will kill all your good gut bacteria and some of the flora, good flora, that lines your urethra. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, if you take a probiotic, mm -hmm. it supplements you with the flora that you're losing. Mm -hmm. So it's not a specific flora or, you know, it's just making sure you're maintaining a healthy balance because it's all about balanced pH down there, guys. We have to make sure that that is in sync. Otherwise, we get... Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So flora, so. that's basically just bacteria. Yeah, when yeah. Say flora, yeah. exactly. Cool. Nonetheless. So if you think about the words themselves, antibiotic, antibiotic. Exactly. Like first probiotic. You can kind of see. So urinary tract infection is an infection of bacteria. People get confused and think all oh, bacteria is bad. It's not. We do need some good bacteria. Right. Color. So this was some good flora. UTI. UTI. And I am so grateful for you guys listening in today. Hope it was helpful. Hope it was helpful. Questions or concerns, let us know. Let us know. Subscribe like and, and like. Hello. 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 Us. Thank you. Sisters Thank you. in Medicine at gmail.com. <laughs> and let us know what you want to hear. Questions or concerns. Yes. Did we deliver? Yes. Let us let know. Us know. Let us know. Anything. What do you want to hear from us? S I am the word. Have a good night. Bye. Sisters in Madison, sisters in Madison, sisters in Madison. Hey, hey, sisters in Madison, sisters in Madison. Hey, thanks for watching.